Welcome to BFG and stuff. I am your filthy casual, Frank Falbo. I'm the walking encyclopedia of video game knowledge, Oz. And we have a guest with us tonight. I'm Oz's roommate, Mike. Nice and simple. We're going to start our very first episode. We're doing some beta stuff before, but now, now we're fucking serious. And how serious are we? We're starting with a Nintendo 64 turning 21 years old just a couple days ago on September 29th. I mean, she's this. legal age everywhere. Yeah, it can drink, it can do drugs, wherever drugs are legal, it can be a prostitute, whatever you want. The Nintendo 64 can fill your needs. And to show our love for this console, we're going to talk about our three favorite games for the best multiplayer console of all time. So, Frankie, you want to start with number three? Yes. So my third game is... I did a lot of research for this one. I, I played... Every best wrestling game on the 64. <laughs> I played Revenge. I've played No Mercy. I've played Virtual Pro Wrestling 1 and 2. That's four out of like 11 wrestling games or so. I know, but those are the top best ones. Those are the ones that people talk about. Sure. Okay. So, my decision, I think this is a no brainer. It is Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. And I was like... At first, I was like, this is not better than No Mercy. <laughs> but I dove into it. I, I learned the game. And I've made my decision that this is better than No Mercy. The reasons why this is better... The best wrestling game on the N64 is a lot more reversal animations. It is more snappier... It is has a lot more better move selections than and the uh, fucking No Mercy on the N64. The fucking No Mercy. <laughs> the fucking No Mercy. Um, I'm not sure if this is pro New Japan Pro Wrestling 2 or Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 yeah. or anti WWF No Mercy. <laughs> I am no. I'm just saying this because like I I know why this is a lot of people put this higher than No Mercy. The other thing is. All Japan, or Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, I keep calling it All Japan for some yeah. reason, uh, is a Japanese exclusive game, so that's kept a lot of people away from it. Yeah, it is. And it's only, like, I guess the one percenters that have played this game. And this is one of the most expensive N64 Japanese carts. It is it, the most expensive. It's the most expensive it's one. It's more expensive than Evangelion, which is, like, 40 bucks, and that's, like, the third place, whatever third place is is like twenty twenty five dollars and I think it's an impunishment. Yeah. Where Virtual Pro Wrestling Two is like fifty to sixty bucks. By the way, if you don't know this, all of them are done by the same developer. It's Aki. I'm not butchering that butchering that at all, right? No. So it's the Aki team. They're known for making great N sixty four games. And like I, I know No Mercy came after Virtual Pro Wrestling Two and I believe why I believe uh, No Mercy is more catered for the North American audience. They care more about different match types, um, like ladder match, that type mm. of stuff. Mm. Ladder match. Mm. Uh, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is more focusing on the wrestling. Because it's a fucking wrestling game. Well, there's at least one person that agrees with you, and that's AJ Styles. Yes. That is his favorite wrestling yeah, but game. What does AJ system. Styles know about wrestling? <laughs> 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 the no, game it's just community. a fucking mark. <laughs> Phenomenal bullshit. Anything else you have to add to that? Um, the thing, the things that lack from it, uh, but like it picks up with gameplay. Uh, the roster is a bit weak, but the thing about it, the creation suite has all of the assets from WrestleMania 2000. So you can make Mankind, you can make Steve Austin, you can make Triple H, you can make whoever the fuck you want. So, I uh, like. That just blows... So, basically, you have the whole r roster of the uh, WrestleMania 2000 games <clears throat> or the old NWO Revenge. So, technically, the roster is limitless, if you think about it. Um, um, other than that, uh, another thing I like about it is what it does... 
I know with No Mercy, the creation suite, you go with a, through a WWE superstar and you win titles and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, with this, is you're reliving, uh, reliving matches. Kind of like... Um, like Legends of WrestleMania, but good. Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> so you get points if you correctly do the matches on point. Uh, and then you unlock characters through that way. Um, there's actually a lot of great legends, like Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, um, Vader, uh, Kamala, Adola the Butcher, <laughs> to name a couple. And then you have your Japanese legends. I'm not going to say them because I'll fucking butcher their names. I would too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, Liger's in it. And He's in everything, though. I know. Come and on. Ultimate Dragon. <laughs> uh, That's I, my boy. One, two of the biggest cruiserweights from Japan. Um, other than that, that's my third pick for N64 game. Alright, so before I go with my third pick, and I'm gonna get fucking slagged to shit by both of you for it, the way I organized my list, because I actually have a complete Nintendo 64 collection, I gotta plug that, all 296, so I was like, man, how the fuck do I narrow this down to three? So what I did was I took all of the games, I organized them by, by genre, and I picked my favorite games in each genre for the 64. Now, I've got that list of, like, the 11 to 12 different genres, and I picked my three favorites that, like, when I hook up an N64, I play these games at least once a year. And I will just sit down, and I can just 100% them with just sitting there. Can I just say something? I have two N64 games that you don't have. You, those are exclusives. So, like, Japanese exclusives, I think. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. I've got complete... Is this clear that you have the United States? North American North set. American. North American set. So, my third favorite game is my favorite racing game on the system, and also my favorite Star Wars game of all time, Star Wars Episode One. Yeah, Racer. I saw this coming. Once I mentioned racing game in Star Wars... Yeah, it's just like, no fucking Yeah, game. I fucking love this game. I bought a Japanese copy of this game, just 100%ed. I bought a Dreamcast version of the game, just to 100%ed. I bought the Game Boy Color version, just 100%ed. This is my favorite Star Wars game. I love the speed. I love, obviously, the Star Wars soundtrack, even though the music only really kicks in on the final lap on the N64 version. I love that the fact that the end of every single race, Watto just, like, hums along his little tune of... Hey, I fucking love that. Even just saying that, I feel giddy just thinking about that, and these two are just shaking their heads with shit-eating grins going, you were fucking wrong, Oz. Fuck you, and fuck you. This is my third favorite Nintendo 64 game, and I have to narrow it down to one per genre, because otherwise it's way too fucking hard. Follow that one up, Mike. Well, <laughs> I would have to say, going in the same genre as Oz, I would say my favorite racing game on the N64 would have to be F-Zero. And this is your third favorite N64 uh, game? Yeah, that's All right. it's kind of tough to narrow it down to my third favorite, because you know the other two are pretty close, too. Well, that, that's but the rule. Third favorite. Third favorite? Gotta be F-Zero X. You want to go into detail about that? Uh, the sense of speed, uh, the track layout, everything about that game. The graphics were beautiful at the time. The music is some of the best music on any racing game or just any console game, period. It's fucking great. The music is phenomenal. It's one of the fastest games on the system. It's one of the very few that's 60 frames per second. And with 30 racers, that is a lot of stuff going on at once. Very impressive. Yeah, there's just... There's nothing else quite like it. All right. Okay. My second is Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, number two? Oh, number oh, two. Oh. Wow. Pitchforks. What are you going to pick? The internet. One? You're worried about me offending the internet. <laughs> you. Okay. So, <laughs> it's a classic, obviously. Uh, first open world 3D... Um, Adventure RPG game, I guess. Well, it's not an RPG, Whoa. but it was like open world for the time. Yeah. For what we saw, what we thought open yeah. world would be. Yes. Okay, how much that um, like huge in that aspect. It's, I guess, the, still one of the best that does its thing. Man, we're really going to catch some shit for all the games <laughs> that we're leaving out. Yeah, um, uh, this, is, this game, like, ever since I've been introduced with the, to the N64, it's always been in my mind. Um... I remember playing it when I was a kid. I fell in love with it. Um, I've owned probably like five different cop versions of the fucking game. 
Um, that's really all you have to say about a time that, like, Legend of Zelda over um, Yeah, I'm just, like, my mind's spacing out, sorry. Um, if you want, uh, The battle system is really good. Um, it was really innovative for the time with the targeting system. Um, never really been done before. Um, pretty sure someone's going to elaborate this. So I'm going to let him do it. <laughs> I don't know who you're looking at. Uh, I don't know who I'm looking at either. It's just this ginger beard right in cross for me. I'm not even going to get into that topic. That's for a different time. Okay. But are you done your number two Yeah, I'm two good. Pick? I'm good. All right, I'm going to follow up with... This was the tough one. My favorite 3D platformer. Because I fucking love 3D platformers. I admitted before that I'm even a sucker for Disney 3D platformers, to be honest. And it came down to Super Mario 64 versus Banjo-Kazooie. And I don't want to pick, but I had to pick. Banjo-Kazooie is more consistent. I love Super Mario 64. I think the beginning, like, three to four levels are better than Banjo-Kazooie's opening three to four levels. But Banjo-Kazooie's every single level, I fucking love. And I cannot say that about Super Mario 64. I fucking hate, like, the last world. We're going around on the fucking carpet. I can't remember the sky level. I fucking hate that level. And I fucking hate the desert, too. Like, I enjoy them. But inside, there, there's a deep hatred for getting some of those stars. And I, do, I, I fucking hate going for the 100 coin challenge in the fucking desert. Because if you don't get all the ones outside of the pyramid, and you go into the pyramid, there's not enough fucking coins in the pyramid for you to get out and get the 100 coin star. And it's fucking piss off and I don't like it. But I still love the game. But that, that was the only defining thing between Banjo-Kazooie and Super Mario 64 that made me choose one was I love every single level in Banjo-Kazooie, including Rusty Bucket Bay. I don't know why that level pisses everyone <clears> off. I fucking love it. I love the soundtrack when it's like all the doo 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 and whatever sound clip. Doesn't matter. I fucking love it. So, and I love the quiz at the end because that's that was out of fucking nowhere. And usually like, oh, I gotta fucking like think about the stuff. I don't like that. It's, it's the... It's well written, it's quirky, it's hilarious, and it's smart. And the questions aren't like bullshit obtuse or something. It's like common knowledge if you're playing the game regularly. So I think because of that, and the soundtrack, I, I love Super Mario 64 soundtrack, but I don't love every song. I love every song on Banjo-Kazooie. And to me, that that is the best 3D platformer maybe ever made. I'm not sure about that, but I will fucking say it is the best on the system. I gotta go follow that one up, Mike. Oh shit! You you, you set the bar pretty damn high. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I'm gonna have to follow that one up. I think I'm gonna have to follow that one up with GoldenEye 64. Just, that game, it changed shooters. Yeah. It still holds up graphically. It's still beautiful to look at. In it ways. Changed. <laughs> yeah, sure. It, it, it's <laughs> aged as all early 3D games have, but. It still holds up. Gameplay, yes, it's dated. It may be my nostalgia glasses, but I remember so, so many times just playing that game with friends. That game changed first-person shooters for the better. Uh, the music was great. The multiplayer was great. The single-player campaign was awesome. If you pick Odd Job, you're an asshole and you deserve <laughs> to get slapped. Real men pick Jaws and don't win games. Because <laughs> then everyone has odd job compared to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I I'm going to have to pick that one for just the contributions it made to the first-person shooter genre and how much it changed shooters. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. It changed I mean, the game for sure. Yeah, that, that was a real game changer. As I much as I love Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Kazooie just gave us more of the same refined to perfection. It, it didn't bring anything new to the table. That one, you gotta give it to Mario 64. You, you got something to say, Frankie? Speaking of Mario 64... Are you going to your number one? Yeah. Oh, it's Segway. Segway. Oh. <laughs> so, my number one N64 game is... Mario 64... What, did I say Mario 64 game? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we do this. Your, your number one Mario 64 game is Mario 64. <laughs> my favorite Good Nintendo call. 64 game... Is Mario 64. It could have been Banjo-Kazooie if I beat it. You haven't beaten Banjo-Kazooie? No, I haven't. I have the cartridge. This list may change, according to Frank. It might change, but the reason why Mario 64 sticks to me 
is when I was a little boy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just like one of the first games that I remember playing. Um, yeah, I've actually beaten it, surprisingly. Um, it's changed. It basically created the 3D platforming genre. Yep. Um, a lot of games have a hard time mastering. But even to this day, no one can get it right except for the rare and... Whoever made Mario sixty four Nintendo, I don't, I don't know the exact studio who made Mario. 64. Yeah, it was, it was just Nintendo. Just they're, Nintendo, they're and it just baffles me that like it takes them so long. Like, I, maybe Mario Odyssey will be that game, but there hasn't been a good platformer since that generation. Oh, well, there's been some good ones on like PS two, Xbox, GameCube, and okay. such, but it's definitely a dead genre compared to yeah. what it was. Yes, we Let's... pretty much only had Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii as a big game that was a three D platform. But it, it was just so some like okay ones on the PS2. Like, right now, I guess the top genre is first person shooters, right? That's the yeah. genre that everybody's after. During that era, it was three D platform. Yep, absolutely, and it was a golden era. It was. <laughs> I wish I was a kid during that. I was probably like two or three. Which no, you're fifteen. You're fifteen. For I life. was always. They don't. Audience don't understand that. They're joke. gonna learn that. Okay, I'm fifteen. <laughs> when I was fifteen, two. That's when probably. <laughs> it was the golden age of platformers. So time for my segue. Speaking of golden. How about we talk about the first golden cartridge for the Nintendo 64 and the best Nintendo 64 game, which is also the highest rated game of all time with the only 99 on Metacritic, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This game is so good, I paid my good friend, a tattoo artist with the greatest rack in the world, a couple hundred dollars to stab me for hours inputting the Master Sword and Hylian Shield on my forearms. That's how much this game means to me, and to a lot of people. So the reason why The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is the greatest Nintendo 64 game ever made is, well, everyone's already fucking said it. Like, I don't know what I can say to this game that hasn't already been mentioned, aside from the fact that, like, I have Zelda tattoos and it's inspired from that game. So the only thing I can really share aside from my fanboyism for that game, is my story of how I got Ocarina of Time. Because even though it's just like a Christmas story, there's a build-up, and I'm going to share that build-up. Uh, so ever since, I don't know, maybe 94 or so, and I got my first Game Boy, uh, I was subscribed to Nintendo Power. And every month, I'd be the cool kid with the Nintendo Power issue, telling everyone at recess all the cool stuff that's coming out and all that kind of stuff. But for some reason, in like early 1998, I stopped getting issues. And I asked my grandmother, and I was like, hey, you're like the one that's in charge of getting me this stuff. Like, where's Nintendo Power Issue? No one no one else has this. No one else buys the gaming magazine. They all rely on me. And she's like, oh, I don't know what's happened. Like, I'm, I paid for the subscription. I'll mail them a letter. Not email. Email wasn't really a thing back in 98. And I didn't get an issue for, like, months. And then Christmas morning comes, and I'm going through. I got some Game Boy Color games I really wanted. Maybe, like, I don't know, Donkey Kong Land or something. I can't remember. Maybe even Pokemon. I don't remember. But I remember my grandma brought out, like, the past ten issues of Nintendo Power that she has hidden from me. Because for, like, months, all they were talking about was Ocarina of Time. And I had no idea that Ocarina of Time was coming to 64. I was heard about Zelda 64, but I only saw those, like, super shitty screenshots from, like, 1996. Like, Nintendo Space World or whatever the fuck they called it back then. So she's like, boom, ten issues. And I read every fucking page front to back. I'm like, holy fuck. Zelda's actually coming to the 64. I need this game. I appreciate that however you got these magazines, and that's great, and I'm learning so much about these other games coming out, whatever. I don't fucking care. The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, I need this game. When I was done reading all of the issues, like, you cannot be fucking with me. I am 10 years old. I can't handle this. And then she's like, oh, there's one more gift right here. And it was fucking Ocarina of Time. And I just lost my fucking mind. And for months... That's probably one of the longest games it took me to beat, because it took me about three months to beat, which it doesn't take me that long to normally beat games. Even at my age now, I usually blast through a game in a couple weeks at most. But even after beating the game, the process of that, I had a friend named Oscar who also got the game for Christmas, and we were helping each other every day at school if we were stuck on a part or 
uh, discussing like rumors that we heard and trying to confirm the rumors in the game like oh you can get like a sixth bottle or whatever and it's like what the fuck there's only like four or five that you can fit and we're like debunking them and then we got into speed running so the first game that I truly got into speed running was Ocarina of Time as we were trying to beat each other it's like oh I can beat this game in, in a week and I'm like how the fuck do you beat it in a week now I can say I can boot up a fucking N64 and Ocarina of Time and beat it in about 40 minutes I know the world record's like 20 minutes, but I'm not that reliable for activating that fucking, you know, glitch where you go in again it's tower. Anyway, that's about the only new thing I can talk about Ocarina of Time. It's like that that game turned my hobby of video games into, into an obsession, into a passion. Because it just was like, video games aren't just fun anymore. This, I want to be associated with them for the rest of my life because of this game. This is a long-winded response but it kicks the shit out of Super Mario 64, and that's how I'm ending it. Uh, follow that up, Mike. Uh. You know what? I don't really have much else to add. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with you. Oh! The Ocarina of Time, greatest N64 game ever, period. It's basically a perfect game, and there's almost nothing you can do to possibly improve it. Why does Ocarina of Time mean so much to you? Honestly, it was basically just the perfect evolution of Zelda. I mean, my favorite Zelda game, and I'm going to catch shit for this, my favorite Zelda game is still A Link to the Past. Ooh. Second best. To this day, <laughs> still A Link to the Past. I've played through all of them. I will go back to A Link to the Past. I will go back to Ocarina of Time. I love them both. The Ocarina of Time was the only logical place to go from A Link to the Past. That's why Ocarina of Time is the greatest N64 game. Because after A Link to the Past and how amazing that it was... There's nowhere else you could go. If you're going to go 3D, that's how you do it. That is how you make the transition from the greatest 2D Zelda game of all time to the greatest 3D Zelda game of all time. So with that, if you're listening and you haven't played any of the games we've suggested, you're doing yourself a disservice, play these fucking games. It doesn't it's... matter what videos you're watching for top N64 games, these are all on it, and if Episode 1 Racer is not on the list... Don't trust that list, okay? You can trust this list, because we're all here. We're all in the same room. It's all on the list. It's fine. That said, we should also add some honorable mentions, because there's so many good games. I think this video is long skip. enough, though. That's the problem. Frank okay. is going to have to edit this. He's going to be like, oh my god, we talked forever. Oz would not shut up about Ocarina of Time. I just uh, want to say one more thing before you go. Yeah, what's up? If you're a pro wrestling fan, you need to play virtual pro wrestling, too. It's a must. Especially if you love No Mercy. I'm just saying. Like, it is good. Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is a great wrestling game. I'm not going to talk about best You don't own it, so just shut saying, up. We're gonna catch <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man, we're going to catch a lot of shit for all the games we left off the list if we don't even have them in honorable mentions. Every game gets an honorable mention that's not Carmageddon or Superman 64. How about that? That pretty much... Oh. Made, and you know what? Fuck Lover. I'm just throwing that out there. Fuck Lover. But Superman 64 was going to be my number third. <laughs> you already said three. You said it was... Right. Yeah, it was going to, but I had to put a pro wrestling game because I'm fucking Mark. <laughs> I don't fucking believe you. You don't? Because it was going to be Hercules. You fucking love Hercules. I love Mo Superman 64. <laughs> I don't think you do. I do. You love Hercules. I don't know, I man. What, what was that Elmo, Elmo game? Remember with Shit oh, Mountain? Elmo's oh, Letter Adventure and Number Journey. I don't remember which one. I think it was Shit Letter Mountain. Adventure with Shit Mountain. You know what? At least I don't own those fucking games. At least I have a complete North American set. What's up? At least I have two Japanese games that you don't. <laughs> I thought it was just one. Two. What's I have the whole Japan game. Oh, no, you Japan game, sorry. Ah, oh, you do. Yeah, fuck you. Well, I've got Animal Force. You don't got that. Mm. I don't care. I'm not, I don't collect N64. I, I collect N64 games, but I don't collect I have them. Irritating Stick. Mm. Yeah, but you're the N64 guy. You're supposed to own all these games. Mm. Okay, whatever. Let's go. Let's just end this. So we're gonna edit like the last five minutes out. Yeah, well, that's what Frankie's gonna do. Yeah, probably. if anything, maybe you got a lot of work now, Frankie. Okay. Thanks for watching. What are your top N sixty four games? Leave them in the comments below, and feel free to like give us a whole shit ton of flack for not including your favorite games. We expect to get a lot of shit. You know what? For this. You're fucking wrong. <laughs> He's talking to you, audience, not me, right?